Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing today? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and install my walls once and for all. So walls in permanently? Just the rear ones, yeah. Nice. Got to get something solid going on back there before I lose my mind. Today, I'm going to be installing my gear tray under here. First, I'm going to start with the drawer slides. These are 500 pound drawer slides. These are 44 inches long, and those are the locks at the front. This is a three quarter inch block that's going to go down right there so I could put the drawer slide on it and mount it even on both sides. I want this clearance because out here there's gonna be a floor and then I just want some space on top of that. So don't forget to raise your drawer slide and compensate for whatever flooring is gonna go in front of it. Bear with me, I'm gonna be flipping back and forth to Instagram Reels, so if there are some holes, you can find the rest of the video if you link my Reel and my YouTube video. To secure these drawer slides to the half inch walls, I'm using number 14 zinc half inch screws. You can see how big these are. These are big guys. I'll link them down in the description below. Sometimes these can be hard to find, but again, you wanna be using big pan head screws. I just got both of these slides in. The moment of truth. Let's see if they live up to their name. I'm gonna make a little comfy chair and we're gonna see if it can hold my weight. Let's put it close to the edge for extra leverage. All right. <laughs> I'm 205 pounds and it seems to be holding pretty good. I'm gonna measure the distance between these and start cutting the gearbox. The total height in here is gonna be seven inches. So I was back here measuring the length of the gearbox and I realized I still have to run a three inch hot air duct into this bench across here. Then I realized I never test fit my water tank. It sits on the water lines and I couldn't push it far enough forward because the fan was in the way. So I unscrewed this fan. It's gonna come all the way over there and then I'll be able to push this far enough forward so that those are free. My air duct will travel up here across the water tank down and then through right above those lines. So the air duct will be traveling on top of these lines. I'm just trying to figure out the location of everything. I can't start that gear tray until I get this stuff figured out. When you're hole sawing through laminate, you wanna go through the laminate head on on both sides. So I went part of the way through and I was able to match the drill bit in the hole and cut the laminate on the other side. Now I'll just finish here. After taking measurements for the gear tray, I decided the walls are gonna be five inches high. All right, so all the drawers are gonna get laminate. I haven't made a drawer box in a while, so I did make a little mistake here. On the back side, I put the pocket holes on the sides instead of on the back, which is perfect because no one would have ever seen it. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece of quarter inch, laminate it, and then glue it over those pocket holes. Now I'm gonna cut the quarter inch bottom and lay some coin mat on there. What are you doing? Those are some big, yeah. big holes, wow. Let's see if it looks good. Wait, it's kind of a cool effect. I have a, I have a vision in my head, but I Wait. don't know how it's going to look in real life. What's your vision? I can't explain it. You'll just have to wait and see. I'm going to do like lighting in there, and then I'm going to frame it with bendy ply. Yeah, I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the backing yet. Nice. Mm -hmm. Just cut the bottom. Let's see if it fits. Looks good. Now I'm gonna lay coin mat on the inside portion. It's basically just a really durable rubber mat. I 
spaced this up with half of an inch because there's gonna be a quarter inch floor right here and I need a quarter inch of play for the drawer to slide. I'm pre-drilling because I'm using number 14 screws, which is the size of this hole. So if I misplace the start of this screw, it's gonna pull the hinge in a bunch of different directions. I'm gonna strength test this right now. 500 pound drawer slides. Ooh. Keep in mind, I'm at the very end with all that leverage. All right, the mic went out for these shots, but this is Abby's wall and she test fit it and it looks awesome. Here's a quick update since I've done quite a bit since the last shot. I went ahead and I built this hidden drawer. So this will be opening into the main aisle. I got something really exciting in the mail yesterday. It's a 12 volt electromagnet that can hold 150 pounds. So it doesn't work unless there's power to these lines. This magnet is going to hold this hidden drawer closed. Here's the piece that's going to hold the electromagnet upside down. It'll be pocket holed into the side and the magnet will be sitting just like that. It opens and it closes with ease. Once you give it power, this thing isn't going anywhere. You're using this if you wanna store valuables like cash, passports, wallets, you name it. That kind of thing, that goes in here. And the front will be a solid face with no hardware. You have to slip your fingers underneath the face and there will be a groove that will allow you to pull this open. But if you don't know that the groove is there and you don't know where the switch is for power for this magnet, you're never gonna get in here. So if you wanna power this in your van, you're running a wire from your battery bank to a switch, and then from your switch to this magnet. I recommend choosing a switch that doesn't have a light when the switch is on, because it's always gonna be on if that drawer is engaged. That's all I would be able to get around to today. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.